Hi, I am Aliza Tanvir from SkillCurve. In this video, you will learn how to ingest data sets of various sizes into Redshift. And for that, we will first create a stack using the cloud formation. Then we will download the data sets and upload the data sets into the Amazon S3 bucket. Then we will download and install the data grip and we will connect the data grip with our S3 bucket. Then we are going to create schema and tables in the data grip and finally we will load the data from our S3 bucket into the table. So we will start by using the cloud formation to launch a Redshift cluster using the AWS CLI just like we did in the previous video. If you have any confusion you can also refer to the video on how to launch a Redshift data warehouse using the cloud formation. And before moving towards actually executing the query, we have to make a small change in the params.json file. In the end of the params.json file, you have to add a new parameter having the parameter key of bucket name and the parameter value is the value of the S3 bucket that you create. Okay, so you have to replace this name with the name of your S3 bucket. And once you have done this, save the file and then you are good to go. Okay, let's come to our command prompt and in order to create the Redshift warehouse using the cloud formation, we can write this query. Here we are using the AWS cloud formation command to create the stack, having the stack name first Redshift, then the template body is in the file create cluster, the parameters are in the file params.json and the capabilities are in the capability of IAM. Execute it and if it executes successfully then you will get the stack id which we got here which means that our stack is creating now let's check what is the status of the stack and for that we can write this query which says aws cloud formation describe stacks and then we are describing the name of the stack whose status we want to find okay let's execute the query and you will get the status and here you can see that the status of the stack is creation in progress and different things are being done which means that our stack is being created. Let's go to our AWS console to see this that the stack is actually created. Here you can see that I am in my cloud formation and inside the stacks you can see that a stack name first redshift is being created. The creation is going to take some time. So in the meantime Let's move towards our S3 bucket. In the search bar, type S3 and you will land on this page. Here I have already created a bucket with just a few simple clicks. The name of my S3 bucket is my test data source. I'm going to click on it and here I have to upload two different files which are the data sets that I'm going to use. In order to download the data sets, you have to go to the website imdv.com slash non-commercial datasets and then from this particular link which says https datasets.imdbws.com once you click on it you will land on this page and from this page you have to download the title.aks.tsv.gz file and then title.basics.tsv.gz file and once they are downloaded, you have to extract it. And these are the files that we are going to load in our S3 bucket. So once you have downloaded the files and extracted them, click on upload button in your S3 bucket to upload the files. From here, you have to select the files, click on add files, and then browse to the file that are present and then click open. And you can see that one file is of the size 290.6 MB and the other one is of the size 164.2 MB. Okay, then simply click upload. The uploading is going to take some time because the files are relatively large size. So once this is completed, we'll come back. You can see that our upload has succeeded and both the folders have been uploaded. Let's have a look at our stack too. So you can see that a stack named first redshift has been created and I have run an update on it. So the update is completed as well. So before moving forward, another thing that we have to do in this video is to download and install data grab on your local system. And to do so, you have to go to Google and type data grab for Windows or your operating system, which you are working on. 
then select the first link for the jet brains when you land on this page you have to select your suitable operating system and then download the data grip exe file and once it is downloaded then with a few clicks you can simply install it on your system and after installation it will look something like this okay so now we have to connect this data grave with our s3 bucket into which we have uploaded our downloaded data sets for the movie title and for that we need to have our im s3 link which is the link that we get once we describe our tag so you can see that here in the cluster endpoint here is the link for the cluster and then we have the IAM role here so right now we need to have this cluster endpoint so I am going to copy this and then let's move back to our data grip so here once you are on this page you have to click on the database explorer and you will have a window like this click on this plus button and once you have the option you will select the data source and then from the menu you will select amazon redshift once this box opens you have to provide a name to your data source i am going to call it redshift and then for the host name here you have to provide your cluster endpoint so let's paste the cluster endpoint here but you have to remove the port part because port 5439 has already been there then we have to provide a username and password and this username and password is going to be this master username and the password that we mentioned in params.json file so i have defined the username as admin and password is this value so i'm going to add it here okay so the username is admin then enter the value for the password and then you have to provide a database name so here you can see if you scroll a bit up you will see that the database name is first redshift you can either copy it or type it yourself and then paste it here okay so our database red first redshift will be created if the connection is created okay so let's test the connection and you can see that the connection has been successfully created and we are redirected to this page okay so right now we have a database named first redshift which we define and now we have to run different queries to create the schemas and the tables here so we will first start by creating a schema so i am going to write the command create schema imdb select it and then run the execute button and you will see that a schema has been created then we need to create a table for both of our data sets that we have in the s3 so for the first data set we will create the following table having the name imdb.title okay let's execute it and upon executing a table will be created Similarly, we will create another table for the second data set, which is going to be the title basics. And for that, we are going to use this query. Here, we are creating a table imdb.title underscore basics having the following attributes of these data types. Select it and execute the query. And you will see that we have successfully created a schema and the table. Now, the next step is to load the data from my S3 bucket into these newly created tables. And for that, let's first clean this area by removing these commands. Okay, so now in order to copy the data or load the data from my S3 bucket into the tables that we created just now, we can write these two queries. Okay, so firstly, in the first query, we are using the copy command in which we are going to copy inside the table imdb.title and we are going to copy the data from the S3 bucket having the name mytest-source-data and inside the bucket we have a file title.aks.tsv which we loaded then we have ignored the header because the header contains the title name 
then we are accepting the invalid characters the delimiter is a tab and then for the iam role we have to provide a value for that go back to your command prompt and you can see that for the redshift cluster iam role you have an output value okay so you have to copy this value from here and then paste it inside the iam role okay let's select it and execute the query the query will take some time to execute because the number of records in the data sets are very large and after a while you will see that the data has been successfully copied into our imdb.title table and then into our imdb.title.basics table okay so this, in this way the data has been loaded from the s3 bucket into our redshift cluster so these are the two tables into which we have loaded the data so if we double click on any of that data grip is going to run a select query for it, us and it is going to display us all the records that were loaded from the s3 bucket into our cluster okay so this is the titles table and this is the title basics table having all the data loaded from the s3 bucket so this is how you can ingest data sets of various sizes into your redshift cluster using data grip that is all for this video thank you